welcome back to the Toffee Blues YouTube channel, your source for all things Everton. My name is Thomas. We were given a very special opportunity today to speak to Louis Sahara, head of the Merseyside Derby, coming up at the weekend. Uh, we spoke about his time at the club. We spoke about what he thinks about the club uh, at the moment under uh, with a brilliant start under Carlo Ancelotti. Uh, so thank you very much for all your support and all the videos at the moment. Uh, be sure to check out all our social media. And I do hope you enjoy this brilliant interview with former Everton striker. Uh, Louis in, joined the club in 2008 from Manchester United. Uh, Louis, what made you sign for the club and kind of could you describe the process of how that happened to us a bit? Um, so basically, uh, I had a really nice conversation with uh, Sir Alex Ferguson that advised me to, to consider a move uh, at uh, Everton because it's such a great club and has a tradition and uh, wants to really improve. And he thought that uh, I, was, uh, I was the, the, the perfect. Uh, Kind of like a step for me, um, so I really enjoyed the conversation then with uh, David Moyes. Um, I felt like uh, his plan to to build a team uh, that can compete at some point and win a trophy was what I wanted to hear. Uh, otherwise, I would have maybe chosen another place. So I really felt connected because I knew the club. Uh, I remember as well. And it talked twice was a story when we went to Goodison with uh, with uh, Manchester United. And I remember how panicking uh, the manager was uh, because we were we were winning three 0 at half time, and basically uh, you know I missed uh, two seaters and and he actually destroyed me, killed me because uh, he really felt like uh, Everton could come back any time because this is such a club with an history with power with determination that they, they can overcome any situation. So he showed what type of respect that he had for this club and uh, that's why I really felt that it was a really good challenge for me and uh, the right club in terms of uh, infrastructure and, and family aspect. Yeah, and, and you spoke about winning silverware there, of course, straight away in your first season, got pretty close uh, all the way to the FA Cup final. We're going to have to talk about this goal. Uh, I think it's still the quickest in the, in the Cubs history. Uh, 25 seconds in, go 1-0 up against Chelsea. Can you tell us like, what was running through your head when you scored that goal and what was that day like in general? Um, it's, it's strange because uh, I, I've got like a lot of feelings uh, through my mind because uh, I'm kind of like being emotional, emotional because I, I lost a member of my family uh, a few days before and I was like kind of injured and wasn't sure that I could play. I uh, managed to be uh, on the field and after 25 seconds I scored that goal, I was really, really emotional. I wanted to win that trophy for so many reasons. Um, so scoring that goal was like I'm very very happy, but it was way too early, way way too early. So I was I was kind of like uh, frustrated that it didn't happen in 90 minutes. Uh, don't mind the record at all. Um, so it was very special because Wembley, because uh, as I said, you know we deserve. We we thought that we could uh, win that uh, trophy for 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 the fans. So I was like really destroyed more than. You know, when I think about it, I'm just like, you know, very emotional now again because it reminds me a lot of things because I've see, seen some faces from the fans and uh, I wanted to win it for, 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 for that. You know, I came for the club for, for that. So when I, when I recall those moments, I'm, I'm more frustrated than, than thinking about a goal. Yeah, of course. It, it ended up being a disappointing day, but what a brilliant start it was. And talk about a brilliant start. We're back again this season. Everton have seven wins out there. First seven games. What have you made to Evan start of the season and with Carlo Ancelotti as a manager in general? Yeah, I love it. Um, I'm st it's still early doors, but uh, I do love love the style, love the, the actual attitude and, and, and focus they have, the plan that they deliver. I think every uh, fans understand the tactic uh, or whatever the, the manager wants to deliver. His passion, his charisma uh, on, on, the, on the touchline is very interesting. Uh, it brings a lot of confidence. Um, so, yes, you can see that uh, some players like improve uh, with Charlison, with some like very talented players. He seems to have a plan. Uh, he seems to run in a nice pocket. Calvin is the same, like scoring goals for fun. Um, I, I do think that Ames Rodriguez is not the only uh, creative player now, so a lot of options. Um, so, defensively, even stronger. So, all those things are a good sign. You know, we have that kind of, uh, I would say, identity back uh, in, in, in the aggressivity uh, that you, you approach those games, so which is very, very different. 
Yeah, and as you mentioned there, it is very early days, but what are your expectations, do you think, now for Everton for the rest of the season? And where, where do you see us maybe finishing towards the end of the year? Yeah, maybe, uh, you know, uh, it would be uh, such an achievement to be in, a, in the top four because uh, the championship is so hard. Whatever the investment you're making, you, you could invest 200 million, 300 million, you still could be way short, you know, because... Uh, yeah, you have such players from like Tottenham, Arsenal, Chelsea, you know, like uh, you look at even the team like Leicester, so no mention like Man City, Liverpool and, and, and Man U. So I'm, I'm telling you, it's, like, it's really tough league. When you look at uh, every le- other league in Europe, you, there is no comparison, you know. So this one is very tough. So being just outside the top four, getting like close to that Champions, Champions League pot, spot, it will be would be great. I, I, I do think that uh, they, they, they could surprise, they could be the outsider and remain there. And that's what I wish, but uh, it's going to be tough. Yeah, and you spoke about the mentality and the identity there that Ancelotti's clearly brought back to the club, maybe one that we haven't seen, of course, since David Moyes' time. So is that the kind of identity that you felt you had as a squad with players like Leighton Baines, who, of course, has uh, yeah. recently retired? It was a brilliant squad you had together. Do you see a lot of kind of similarities in the, the identity, the mentality that you had when you played for Everton? Yeah, even you mentioned Baines, you know, such a, a great player. I just can't uh, remember such a quality left foot. And now you have Dean, but has the same kind of quality, let's say, but the same determination that I didn't see that when he was playing in other clubs. So now come back and actually see him like very consistently defending correctly like getting forward, helping his boy forward uh, to score goals. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing. The defence are, are doing really, really well. And I love Coleman on his right side. I've always been a big fan of him. But now it's, uh, as I said, the consistency comes from the midfield. And those players have a plan, understand the manager, understand the actual intensity that they need in certain periods of the game. Uh, those moments where you have to actually control the ball, sometimes you have to uh, like give more support to your front line, and, and that's what he's done really well. Sometimes the front line defend for the actual midfielders when they feel like they need help. All those things are amazing to see because it's it's planned. So uh, I get uh, I feel like uh, everyone, uh, even like Duncan uh, Ferguson, has like a big role in. Uh, giving the confidence to the strikers, uh, the way they run, the way they, they pick up the ball in the pocket, um, yeah, hold the ball in the right moments. All those things are, as a striker, I see that uh, there is some nice communication down there. Yeah, brilliant, actually, because that was actually going to be my next question. You weren't afraid of scoring a goal yourself, a player that's definitely not uh, score, uh, afraid of scoring this season. is Dominic Calvert-Lewin. What have you made of his start as a, as a fellow striker to the, to the season this year? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. As I said, um, it's like, not surprising, scoring goals uh, with his quality, scoring goals consistently with his quality. It's what is the challenge uh, because, yes, he's got so much energy. Sometimes you have a tendency to do too much. You have to remain very focused and very, um, I would say, a smart in a way to actually always believe. And when if you struggle in the game, you will have to, to do that because there are some games... Uh, Everton won't be uh, the team that's going to dominate or control the ball. It will have to remain very calm. And I think that uh, this is what is very interesting with Ramos Rodriguez because th- this guy has got such an imagination, creativity, that now strikers have to be alert all the time. They have to be on their toes. They have to, to run to, to, to propose something because the guy has got, <laughs> got always his head uh, uh, looking at you, So which is like, what those guys need to really be uh, very determined to actually be on the move, be uh, be relaxed when they are in the box, feel like they are invisible and, 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 and do the magic for, for the team. Yeah, my, and my final question, we're obviously going to have to address it coming up this weekend. It is the Merseyside Derby, both teams coming into this in very good form. Um, what was it like to play in a Merseyside Derby for yourself? And have you got any maybe predictions for the game this weekend? Yes, I, I do remember that uh, you always like think about that kind of run that uh, Steven Gerrard had against us, uh, always scoring against us, uh, playing some amazing games. But uh, yes, I always remember that it was like a big fight physically, 
the intensity of those games were amazing. So every challenge was like a yeah, good 50-50s and, and very honest and authentic, but very, uh, as I said, honest. It was like uh, no one wanted to really hurt anybody, but very committed to the cause. And this is the type of games I really look forward. Um, I do think that uh, those games are, are five points um, because yeah, it brings so much confidence to the to the to the team, to the club, and and to the to the town. So it's it's amazing to have that kind of publicity around the world, you know, because this uh, society is uh, followed everywhere. Thank you very much for watching. That is the end of the interview with Louis. Uh, it was a brilliant insight into his time at the club, what he thought about the FA Cup final day, what he thinks about the players at the moment. Uh, so be sure to uh, let us know your thoughts on Louis Hart down below. I was always a massive fan. Um, we really hope you enjoyed the video. Check out all the social media. As I mentioned, thank you all very much for all your support on the videos and join us next time on the Toffee Blues.